Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about something specific, something special. I want to share a viewer's story with you guys. I got this sent to me uh, like a month ago now and I really want to share it with you. So let's head over to the office, sit down and have a chat about this. Oh, what a dirty toy you have. Okay, here we are. Um, <coughs> gonna need some... Daylight. Daylight. Close enough. Okay, time to set up for filming. What background do I want today? Um, what the hell? The fuck has happened to my frame? Well, that was easily fixed. All straight. What background do we want for this video? Oh, there's a dog out there. Ah, it's taking a crap. Something like this, maybe? Okay, I need to set this up. Wow, great setup. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. Like I said, what I want to do, I got this email when I did my personal tattoo advice thing. Um, I got this email from a girl and she, it was like a really long email. Um, let's see, what about the settings here? Oh, okay. <laughs> and it was just such a, it was an interesting story that I asked her, can I please make a video just dedicated to your question. I don't even think I have a good answer for her. It's just that I I really want to share it with you guys because I think maybe some of you can help. You can lend support. I don't know. It's a very interesting story and it's really long. So this video is basically going to be me reading her email to you guys. Let's get cooking. I am going to censor because it's, I mean, obviously it's a private question or personal at least. So she asked me to take away like obviously her name and the cities that we're talking about. I'll just blank. I might may, may call it like city one and city two or whatever. Just to keep her anonymity. Anonymity. To keep her anonymous. About a year ago, I found out about this super talented artist on Instagram and straight away knew this person had to tattoo me. The thing is, I live in Europe and they live on the other side of the world, 13,000 kilometers away from me. Last summer though, they announced they would be doing a guest spot in September 2016 in City One. City One is closer to where this person lives. Um, I did email this artist right away to secure a spot with them. Very quickly though, something went wrong with the tattoo shop that they were going to be guesting at and that they would not be coming to Europe anymore. I was so disappointed because the idea of getting this tattoo was now so present in my mind. I ended up deciding to do something quite crazy and travel there to get this tattoo. I'm a quite well-traveled and super spontaneous person, so it was crazy, I'll admit, but I was okay with it. So I asked them when their next availabilities were. They told me they had two free days by the end of December. And right now it was late August. I took a couple of days to think about it and looked up plane tickets and that was it. I booked my tickets. He booked me in for the two days. I was in for quite a large piece. And I spent the four longest months of my life thinking about this trip and tattoo to come every single day and being so excited about it. Jumping in time, straight to four months later, when I actually arrived there. Oh wait, I forgot to say that before that, he actually was quite flirty in his emails. Not in an awkward, but in a very cute, lovable way. Like saying he was very excited to meet me and tattoo the prettiest girl on the other side of the world. His words. These kinds of things. So it was cute, but still. So the day of the tattoo, I was very impressed meeting him. He admitted to me later he was impressed too because he'd been longing to meet me for a while as well. But the design was absolutely perfect. I'm usually extremely picky when I ask for a custom design. Most of the time there's either something I want added or to be rethought. Though this time it was just gorgeous. I was over the moon. The artist was, as I expected, very very lovely. A very chill dude. We talked throughout the whole session and had a lot of fun. 
We were supposed to have two days of tattooing, but I had so much fun that time actually went by quite fast and I could take the eight hour session in a day. It was still painful though, not acting like it was all easy. Now that I think back about it, when getting my other two three hour pieces, I actually realized how crazy this shit was because I can barely get through two up to three hour sessions at a time now. Anyway, the tattoo was done at the end of the day and that was it. I have to admit that by the time I was going back to my hotel, I realized I had quite a crush on him. But I'm the kind of person who very often kind of mistakes admiration for love, so I just let it go. Plus, I was absolutely knackered after that day. That was until next morning, when I woke up very, very early because of a notification on my phone. It was like 6am to find out the notification was actually an email from him that he just sent. I'm not a morning person, but this woke me up instantly. The email read something like, hey, so I really had to get this off my chest. I have a huge crush on you, and I had the best day spending time with you yesterday. I was honestly screaming inside reading this. My heart was jumping all around, but I still needed some sleep, so I fell asleep for another couple of hours. When I woke up again, seeing I gave him no answer yet, which I was totally planning to do just a bit later that morning, he had sent me another email going by, I'm so sorry if I've been inappropriate. Please forgive me. Your trust is so important to me and I promise I'll keep it professional from now. So I got back to him quite fast being like, that was not inappropriate to me. I'm sorry it took me a little while to answer, but I was left a little speechless since I kind of had a crush on you too. We kept talking for the next two days, a bit more lightly, but haven't seen each other again and it was time for me to leave. I was not going back home, just flying to another city to make the whole trip even more interesting. As a well-traveled person, it happened to me more than once to meet awesome people and have to leave not knowing if I'll ever see them again. So I was a little sad, but I knew I'd see him again someday as I wanted him to keep on tattooing me. It wouldn't be soon, but I was alright. So I jumped on my plane. When I landed, I had received a text on my phone. So it was December 29th and and I was planning two days later, after having visited this city, to fly to another city to celebrate New Year's Eve. I told him that briefly on the day he tattooed me while we were talking about anything and everything. So, the text. It was him. It literally said, I'm coming tomorrow. And that's it. I was like, excuse me, I think you texted the wrong person. And he answered straight away. No, I booked a plane ticket. I will be in this city tomorrow. I wanted to celebrate New Year's Eve with you. So again, my heart jumped out of my chest. He arrived in this city the next evening and I was arriving at 6 a.m. the morning after. I had booked a place, so as soon as I arrived, I headed there. I didn't text him not to wake him up, but I got a text about half an hour later saying, I cannot sleep, I'm too excited. Are you here already? He met me at my place just a few minutes after I said yes. I looked like shit. I had no sleep and everything, but he kept giving me compliments and all that. We've been hanging around the city for the whole day and I felt like I've known him forever. Nighttime came, New Year's Eve fireworks at midnight. He kissed me for the first time. We kept exploring the city until six in the morning. I had been awake for 24 hours and that night I knew he was the one. We said that we loved each other. He asked if I'd marry him. I laughed. He said he was serious. I said yes, but not in this city. We decided to travel the world together and get married in... As I'm telling all the story to someone for the first time in this email, I realize how crazy it does sound, but it felt so right at the time. It was honestly the time of my life. And he left at 6 in the morning as he was flying back home. We kept calling each other every day for the next two weeks. Then it progressively became a little less than that. He was so busy all the time. He got obsessed with fitting in as many clients as he could to get money and save up to move to Europe. So we were talking less and less because of that, still saying I love you to each other every day. But that was pretty much it. One day I was not in the best mood and asked him to get back to me whenever he could so because we needed to talk. He did hours later and all these hours were just making me feel worse. We talked about the future and I showed all my worries. He tried to reassure me but then got very anxious himself. And without notice, as we were talking, he blocked me on Instagram. I called him and he told me he couldn't take it anymore, that he loved me too much to keep disappointing me, that if he couldn't make me happy, he should just leave me alone. We talked for hours, cried a lot, but got everything back to normal. It lasted for about a week, 
The next week, I was getting tattooed by a guy. I put a picture during the session on my Instagram story, as I would very randomly do with pretty much anything, and realized not long after that he had blocked me again. I called him, he didn't pick up the phone, I mailed him, he said he couldn't take it anymore, he actually got jealous of the guy who was tattooing me. I was so mad that he tried to run away for that reason, because we had had that talk before, that I'd get tattooed by other people, and that because I met him through this didn't mean that it would happen with anyone else, since I didn't fall in love with him for what he did, but for who he was. I got so mad I told him that he was right, that we would not make it. And that was it. That was a little over two weeks ago. So, probably like six weeks ago when I'm reading this. Last week he sent me an email. I don't want to lose you. I answered a couple of days later. Me neither. Nothing since. And that's pretty much the whole story. Like I said, I... I don't think I have a good answer about this. It just sounds like a like a romance where you fall in love with someone, love at first sight, but then in the end you're not necessarily made for each other because it's just not the right time. It's bad timing. Obviously this person can't handle a long distance relationship. If it's gonna be this off and on, the person blocking you when, the, when they start feeling bad, that's not how you handle conflict in a relationship. You don't just run away, you don't just block people, you don't just stop answering and then a week later say, I don't want to lose you. That's just not how it works. I, if you guys want to share your own stories, if you have similar experiences or anything where you can give some advice for this person, I very much urge you to do so in the comments below because I told this person that my comment section is a place for support and love and advice and that is a reason they actually agreed to let me do this. So please show some support and if you have any good advice, please give it below because I don't really know what advice I have. Since it was a few weeks ago, I don't know how this has progressed since. Maybe they've worked it out. Maybe they completely stopped talking to each other. I don't know, but it was a nice story. Maybe the foundation of a romantic tattoo related book. I know this is kind of like a weird video to make, but I really wanted to share that story. Because I do get emails from you guys that are really cool, and I don't... I mean, of course I share my stories on my channel, but why wouldn't I be able to share your stories as well? Because not all of you have YouTube channels, obviously, but if I get some cool like stories and stuff, I, I wouldn't mind sharing them with you guys, because why not? But that's enough for now. That's all I was going to... Do here at the office so now i am going to head back home i'll smell you guys in the next video